Hi and welcome to the second in this uh, series of tutorials for beginners in FreeCAD. And this time, as I promised last time, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit more exciting and that something more exciting is to take you through how to design this little project box including some screws and a lid. But in this, uh, this tutorial, this, well, this video and the next one I'll run you through uh, creating the base of this box. So let's get started. So to begin with we need to make sure that we're in our part design workbench and then come up here and click file new and that will create a new blank model. Once we have that we need to create a body for our little box to live in so we'll come up here on and click on the body icon which creates a body over here on the in the model view and then we can either click on the sketch icon up the top here or the sketch icon on the side here to create a sketch now I'm going to 3d print this box so I'm going to put the I'm going to start sketching on the XY plane because the XY plane represents the bed of the 3D printer. Don't have to, um, you can rotate it later on, but this is just a habit that I have. So let's go into that. Now, as soon as you click OK there, it opens up the sketch workbench and uh, we can start creating a sketch. Before I do that though, I'll quickly run through the controls up the top here. So up the top we have our, our view controls that I talked about last time um, and these allow you to select the front, top, back uh, and so on views, three dimensional views. Now this is a two dimensional drawing tool so um, three dimensions don't make a hell of a lot of sense just at the moment but they do come in useful a little later on. So below that we've got the drawing tools so we have tools for drawing points, lines, arcs, circles, uh, and so on. <clears throat> we have splines, polylines, rectangles, geometric shapes. Um, and I'll quickly run through the difference between the polyline and the line tool. So if I click on the line tool like that, you can see that there's an icon next to the cursor, which looks like the line tool. If I click there and click there, that creates a line. Now if I right click the line tool closes. So I'll come up here and do the polyline. So click on a polyline and you can see that now next to the cursor I have the polyline icon. If I do the same thing, click there and click there. Now there's another line attached to the, uh, the first line I created and this will create a sequence of lines as you go around clicking. Now if I click on that point there, the first point in the, in the sequence, that ends that particular line drawing um, session. If I have the same thing going on here and I want to stop that from drawing anymore, simply right click, stop drawing and then right click again and that exits the tool. Alright, so next to the, uh, the drawing um, tools we have some uh, line editing tools. This uh, tool here allows you to create a fillet between two lines. The lines don't have to be perpendicular, they can be at any angle. Um, there's also <laughs> a more advanced uh, version of that. We have a trim tool and uh, I'll just quickly show you that. So say we have created ourselves a some a little box and we actually just want the box we don't want the external bits come up here to the trim tool and we can trim those away there's also a line extender tool and that uh, as it sounds extends a, a line that doesn't cross another line to cross that line here we have uh, the edge, uh, external edge tool, um, which I'll use in a minute. Uh, and 
I won't talk about this one just at the moment. That copies the geometry from another sketch. And here we have a toggle between normal lines. So this is a normal line, and that one's visible from outside the sketch. And if I click on that, you'll notice all of these lines go blue. And that means that now we're creating construction lines. And construction lines are very useful. They're, they're, not a, they're not visible from outside the sketch, and they won't create 3D geometry. But they can be used to constrain the lines that you are drawing with. So let's put that back. We're drawing normal lines again. Next to that we have some constraints. Now the constraints, as, a, as it sounds, will constrain uh, aspects of the drawing, so points or lines or arcs um, in some way. So this first one constrains two points to be coincident. This constrains a point and either an arc or a line uh, to be coincident. We have a vertical constraint, so when you put this on a line, that line will always stay vertical. We have a horizontal constraint, which is exactly the same, except it's horizontal, so the line will always be horizontal. We have a parallelism constraint. When you put that on two lines, those two lines will stay parallel. And we have a per perpendicular, perpendicularity, ugh, a perpendicularity constraint, which will make two lines perpendicular. Uh, we can put tangents between curves and lines. The equality constraint constrains two objects to be the same in, uh, say, for example, length or radius. We have a, a mirror constraint, or a symmetry constraint. So that constrains two points to be symmetrical about um, a line. Uh, this one here, which I often get confused with that one, is the block constraint. So when you put that on an edge, that edge is not going to move anymore. So you, you don't have to... Um, fully you know, describe the, the vertical and horizontal distances of an edge. If you draw an edge and it's where you want it to be, drop that on it, it won't move. This one here uh, locks the horizontal and vertical distance constraints of a selected vertex. So if you have a point here and you don't want it to move, let's put a point there, and at the moment it moves around anywhere. But if I highlight that and put that, oh, that wants an edge, that's the one. There we go, that one that will automatically create the length and length constraints for that dot. Speaking of which, we have a horizontal uh, distance constraint and a vertical distance constraint. These two um, basically dimension the distance between um, the endpoints of a line. We have the same thing here. Uh, this is an arbitrary um, angle constraint. So we can create a, a line at an angle and put a length on it um, and that line can still move around all over the place um, it's not constrained to be horizontal or vertical at the end here we have the circle radius or diameter constraints so we can either constrain the circuit circle to be a, a particular diameter or we can give it a radius and at the end here we have the angle constraint and that'll fix the angle between two lines. The other constraints that we've got over here, the other tools I'm not going to talk about just for the moment. Um, they're a little bit more advanced and I don't use them very often um, but I might uh, run, in, run through these um, in a future video when, I, when we get to the more advanced uh, commands. But for now let's start creating our box. So if we come up here and click on the rectangle tool, create a rectangle. Now the other way I could have done this of course was either grab a polyline or some lines and just draw the individual lines. I'll do that in a sec so I'll just show you that. You'll notice that the uh, lines already have constraints on them. So this is a horizontal constraint here and a vertical constraint here. That matches these two icons. And that simply means that those lines are always going to stay vertical or horizontal. Now, over here in the combo view, uh, we have a message that says we have four degrees of freedom. Well, what does that mean? It means that um, this line, for example, can be any length. It's not defined to be any particular length. This line here, same story. Even though it's vertical, it can be any length, any, like, any position. So the lengths and positions of these 
lines um, are completely arbitrary at the moment. So let's do something about that. First of all, we'll put a horizontal constraint on this line. So we click on that line, click the horizontal constraint, and then type in the length that we want that line to be. In this case, 80 millimeters. There is another way to do that. What you can do is pick the two endpoints of the line, just like that. Make sure they're both highlighted, and then click the horizontal constraint, and you get the same thing. So we'll do the same with with the vertical line make sure it's green so it's selected click on that and I'm going to make this 50 alrighty so those lines are now constrained their lengths are not going to change and so if we come over here and have a look at the combo view now we see we've got two degrees of freedom so we've we've resolved two of the ambiguities we've still got ambiguity in the vertical plane and the horizontal plane so this rectangle can be anywhere uh, on this plane. It could be kilometers away. The system doesn't know. So let's uh, resolve that now. So I'm going to pick this point here and then I'm going to tell it to be 40 millimeters from that point there by picking those two points, clicking on the horizontal constraint, typing in 40, which is half of 80. Um, there is another way a shortcut way to do that and that's just to click that point there and this is a bit of this can be a bit, a bit of a trap um, if you think you've clicked the other point but you actually haven't and you click on that line and it automatically assumes that you mean the distance between that point and the vertical axis because you click the horizontal distance so that's a nice shorthand way of doing things but it can be a bit of a trap sometimes so the same deal with the uh, that vertical distance of that point, make that 25. Now I say that this could be a trap because uh, if I were to, for example, pick those two points there, 40 millimeters as you would expect, but if I just pick that one point, that now says it's minus 40 millimeters. Um, which still means the same thing. It just means that that point is minus 40 millimeters from the vertical axis in that direction, in the, the, the rightward direction. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is if you come back later on and you go, well, I didn't want that to be 40, I wanted it to be 45, and you just type in 45, oh, it's now gone all the way over here, and that's not what you wanted at all, or well, certainly not what I wanted. I wanted that to be over here. So, um, it's just something to watch out for. <clears throat> okay, so now that I've fully constrained that, we can see that the gr the lines have all gone green, and that simply means that these lines are all fully constrained. We also have in our combo view, combo view over here a message that says the sketch is fully constrained. So that's ready to go. I'll just close that, and you can see that the the, uh, the sketch is visible from outside the sketch. Alrighty, so if I show you now, that's sitting on the XY plane, just like that. Now the way I did that was simply to come up here and highlight the origin and tap the spacebar. Every time you tap it, it toggles its visibility. So let's just turn that into a solid object now. So the way we're going to do that is by taking that sketch and extruding it in the vertical direction, or the, the perpendicular direction, should I say, perhaps. So I'm going to select the, the pad tool here, click on that, and it turns it into a solid. And now I can come over here into the task view and tell it how thick I want it to be. I want that to be 30 millimeters. So I'm going to make, make that 30. Click on there. Uh, I can also make that symmetric to the plane, which at this point doesn't make a whole lot of difference or sense. So I'll just leave that. But that uh, will become useful later on. Okay, so there's a basic block. We need to create the void in here, uh, the inside of our box. I also want to leave these pillars in there. Now there's two ways we can do that. One is to do it in this sketch right now, so as we're about to, to create this. The other way is to come in and later on add these in as pads.
but I'll show you how to do that with a sketch now. So I click on that top surface, it uh, goes green, it's, it's selected, and then click on the sketch tool, and I'll just quickly throw a, a rectangle in there. And then when I come back out, you can see that sketch is now sitting on the top surface. If I have selected that surface there, and put a sketch on there, like that, you can see that's sitting on the front surface. Now if I were to pad that out, create a pad there, it creates a knob on the side. So that quite, you, you, that's quite useful for putting things on different surfaces. And the surface doesn't have to be perpendicular like this, and they can be at any angle. But uh, that's a, a, a useful thing that we'll use later on. So let's come back into this sketch and define this void. So that uh, looks kind of like a rectangle, but it's going to have some uh, pillars in the corner. So uh, to do that, I'm going to come up here for, and use my polyline and just quickly put some of these in. And uh, something to note is that as I bring the cursor over that line, or this line, or that line, any of these lines, um, the line highlights to show that that line has been selected. And you'll also see that there's another symbol shows up next to the cursor, and that's this one here. And what that means is that the point I'm about to create is going to be fixed to that line. So I'll just do that. And now as I drag it away, you can see that if I get that line sort of vertical, the vertical constraint pops up next to the cursor. See that? So that's a vertical constraint symbol, the same one here. And that just simply means that that line that I'm going to, about to create is going to be vertically constrained. And you can see the vertical constraint icon here on that line now. The same deal with the horizontal constraint. As I come across, get it horizontal, horizontal constraint pops up. Now, as I come to that line, you'll see we've now got two symbols there, the horizontal constraint, but we've also got the constraint that's going to link the end point to that line. So I'll click on that, and it creates it, and then right-click to end that polyline tool. So that's a, a quick way to create these constraints while you're drawing. Not uh, completely necessary. I'll just uh, quickly demonstrate here. So this line here should be horizontal, but it's not. So what I can do is come up here, just highlight that line, come up here to the horizontal constraint, click on it, and that makes that line horizontal. Same deal with this one. I want that to be vertical, so I'll click on that, and it's vertical. This one's already horizontal. This one here is all over the place. I actually wanted that point to be sitting on that line. So I'll highlight those two, come up to this line, point line constraint, don't know what that's called, but anyway, I click on it, and that constrains those two together. And again, the same thing here, make that vertical. Alrighty, so that's uh, looking pretty good. The only problem is we've got, um, when this goes to uh, create a solid, it's not quite going to know what to do with it. Uh, it's going to have an inside there, and an outside there, and an outside there, but that outside's also an inside. Um, and that's not going to make any sense at all as a 3D solid, so we need to trim this up and, and clean it up a bit. So I'm going to come up here to the Trim tool, highlight the bit of the line that I don't want, and click, and that'll be deleted. Same deal here, as soon as I highlight that, click, same thing. So I'm going to delete all of those. And now we've got something that looks kind of what our void's going to look like. Now I could leave it there and sort of make this sort of some arbitrary distance and it's not really going to work because later on we want to make holes in things and we need to know exactly where they they are. I want to make this wall two millimeters thick, all of them in fact. So how can I do that? Well one way to do that is to define the vertical distance of that line and that was going to be uh, 22 no, I don't think that's right. I think it probably should be 23. I don't know. There's an easier way to do it. 
What I'll do is I'll come up here to this edge tool that I talked about earlier. Click on that. If I come down and highlight, see that edge there as I highlight it. If I click on that, that creates a construction line with the two points right on the corners. I'll do the same thing down here. All right. So now I've got these two construction lines and these points. Now none of these points and these lines are going to appear. Uh, they're construction lines and they're construction points, but they're not going to appear outside this sketch. They're not going to create 3D geometry, but they're useful because now I can reference them. So I can click on that point, click on that point, and make the vertical distance 2 millimeters. I could also do the same thing here. Except I'm going to make the horizontal distance 2 millimeters. And I'll do this one vertical, 2 mils. And this one here, horizontal, two millimeters. So now those uh, lines are constrained to be two millimeters away from those edges, which means the walls can be two millimeters thick. All right, so I need to define the lengths of these lines, and there's a couple of ways I can do that. One is to come here and again do the same things and do a bit of mathematics and try and figure out I want those lines to be uh, six millimeters long so that's going to be uh, six that's eight and that's going to be 25 minus eight well I can do this I can say uh, that's going to be 25 minus eight and it'll uh, do the calculation for me uh, or I could come over here click that line just tell that to be six That's, got, that's exactly the same thing. Uh, or, and this is probably preferable, what I can do is to make it reference to that point. That's 8 millimeters. Okay, and the reason for that is that if later on I change the size of this box and I make it 55 millimeters across there instead of 50 these lines and these points are all going to follow that box if I define it from here when I make this box bigger this line's going to get longer so that's the way I do this one I'm actually going to do that for the rest of them as well so I'll just <laughs> And there's that trap I was talking about. If you forget to click on that point, which I did, it's now saying, oh, you want that 8mm from the centre. Not what I actually wanted. So make sure they're highlighted. Put 8mm in there. There we go. Now we're talking. Alrighty. This is a little bit tedious, but... Ah, same thing happened again. Now another way I can define these lines, I don't have to come around and define every single one of them. What I can do is highlight that one and highlight that one and come up here to the equality constraint. And you can see that now says that line is equal to line 34. Well, we don't know what line 34 is. Actually, it's this line here. That means those two lines are now the same length. And that can be extremely useful because if I go and do that and make all of these lines the same length then that means that if later on I decide that that line those lines really shouldn't have been six millimeters long like this they should actually have been seven or something else then all I have to do is come in and change one line and they will all change it the same They'll make, make them all the same distance. So let me just quickly do that. That one there. If I can get it. There we go. Make that equal to. And again, we can see that um, when you get the sketch fully constrained, all the lines go green. And as we're going around, you can see that all of these lines here that are, are green are actually fully the lines themselves are fully constrained even though the sketch 
is not fully constrained. But now the sketch is fully constrained. So I've made all of these edges, all these sides, two millimeters thick. And I've made all of these little pillars six millimeters wide. So let's just close that. And here's our sketch. And if I come up here to the pocket tool and click on that, that creates a hollow in that sketch. I can come over here to the task view and I can make that whatever depth I want. Now that was 30 millimeters high. I want the walls to be two millimeters thick. So that's going to be 28. I'll just double click on that and I'll show you this. Now, if I were to make that 30 millimeters, that's now cut that pocket all the way through. There's also an option here to, to cut through all. And what that means is it'll cut from that surface all the way through the solid until there's nothing more to cut away. And that's a, a useful way to make um, tubes and whatnot. In this case, I don't want it to be through all. I want it to be a pocket with a, a bottom on it. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So now if we have a look at this, we can see that there's a little bit of space in here because I'm going to make a lid with a lip that's going to sit in there. So I want that to be, let's make it two millimeters down there. So to do that, I'm going to come up here, click on the top surface again, click on the sketch icon. That puts us back there. Then I'll go grab a rectangle, throw that there. Now, I'm going to come up here and use my edge tool again. Select these edges. Alrighty. And then I'm just simply going to constrain those points onto those edges. And as you can see, um, that point's constrained to that edge. Even if that point's not on the in the, the the edge itself like that, it's actually way out here. It doesn't matter. It just makes means that it's going to be um, tangent to that line effectively. So we'll just do that with all of these like that. Of course, you've got to highlight the line. Okay, so there's our sketch fully constrained, and that was really nice and quick and easy. We'll close that. Then we'll simply pocket that, and I'll make that depth two millimeters. And there it is. That's the first stage of our little box. In the next video, I'll put some holes in here uh, for our lid, and I'll pretty it up by adding these fillets. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.